Hi, thanks for coming to the Writer's Workshop. Today we're going to talk about how to avoid dropped quotes. Let's start with what a dropped quote is. Dropped quotes are quotations you insert into your essays with no lead-ins or introductions. The problem with these dropped-in quotes is that they really disrupt the essay coherency. They make your essay seem choppy, jumpy, and it just makes it harder for the reader to understand. What happens is the reader is left to figure out the link between the point you're trying to make as a writer and the quotation you've chosen to use. Now, you have to remember that establishing this connection is the writer's job, not the reader's. You can't expect a reader to try to figure out what you're thinking. This is especially important when you begin to write, say, your eye search papers if you're seniors or your critical thinking papers if you're juniors. Because readers of research papers also want to know something about the expertise of the writer's sources. They want to know why you chose to quote that person. Now, especially if this is the first time your source is going to be used, then you definitely need to remember to mention the writer's credentials. You don't have to mention the source's credentials every time, but it's really helpful if you mention those the first time you cite that source. Let, let me give you an example of a dropped quote. If you look at this quote here, this is an example of a dropped quote. One major cause of decay in California highways is the increase in motor traffic over the past two decades. Cities and populations have expanded, and most Californians insist on driving their own vehicles everywhere they go. Public transportation has not caught on in most California cities due to their geographic sprawl. You can see that quote there. It's just been dropped in. It's an effective citation because it does relate to what you're saying, but it just doesn't sound as smooth as readers would like. So let's look at an example where a signal phrase has been added. One major cause of decay in California highways is the increase in motor traffic over the past two decades. Cities and populations have expanded, and most Californians insist on driving their own vehicles everywhere they go. As California Department of Transportation Public Service Officer Jill Brigman notes, public transportation has not caught on in most California cities due to their geographic sprawl. Not only does this have a great signal phrase as a lead-in, but you should notice here as well where the citation has changed as well. Instead of it saying Brigman 10, in the second source where you have the appropriate signal phrase or lead-in, you only have to write the page number. Signal phrases are what really help us to integrate quotes more smoothly. Readers they need to move from your words to the source without that jumpy jolt or that choppiness. So signal phrases is a great way to do it. Using clear signal phrases helps to avoid this problem. Here's an example. In 2000, the legislature of Suffolk County passed a law restricting drivers' use of handheld phones. The bill prohibits the use of cell phone while driving unless it is equipped with an earpiece. Again, this is great support, but it just feels choppy. It feels like it was just dropped into the essay. Let's look at another example. In 2000, the legislature of Suffolk County passed a law restricting drivers' use of handheld phones. Journalist Tina Mitt explains, the bill prohibits the use of a cell phone while driving unless it is equipped with an earpiece. Again, we have a great signal phrase giving us a lead-in, but remember, we have also changed, if you notice here, you we've also changed the citation. There's some important ideas you need to remember if you're going to be using a signal phrase. Number one, you don't want to use the same signal phrase over and over. To avoid the monotony and repetitiveness of using the same phrase over and over, make sure you vary the language and the placement of your signal phrases. Number two, when your signal phrase includes a verb, you need to make sure you choose one that is appropriate for the context. Let's look back at the last example we had. In 2000, the legislature of Suffolk County passed a law restricting drivers' use of handheld phones. Your signal phrase was, journalist Tina Mitt explains, 
The bill prohibits the use of a cell phone while driving unless it is equipped with an earpiece. Explains is an appropriate verb to use for this signal phrase. You wouldn't want to use a signal phrase like journalist Tina Mitt exclaims because she's not exclaiming. She's simply explaining the statement. So you need to make sure you're using the appropriate verb in your signal phrase. Now, I wanted to include a couple common signal phrases and verbs to help get you started. Let's look at the first one. In the words of researchers Smith and Johnson, and then you insert your quote. This is a signal phrase that precedes the quote you choose to use. Remember, you want to avoid monotony and repetitiveness. So next time in your essay, you might want to use a different signal phrase. Let's look at the next example. Patty Pena, mother of a child killed by a distracted driver, points out that, and then you would insert your quote. This signal phrase is a little bit different. It starts with an appositive. Let's look at another example. In this example, you have your quote, then you'd write, writes Christine Hughes, then your quote. This signal phrase is actually used in the middle of your quote. And then the final example we have is an example where you would use your quote, then you would use your signal phrase at the end of your quote, claims wireless spokesperson Annette Jacobs. In addition to providing you some common signal phrases, I wanted to give you some examples of some verbs that you can use. These are some common verbs used in signal phrases. Make sure you refer back to this slide if you need some help when you're writing your essay. In addition, on the next slide, I made sure to provide some more examples of other resources you could use. These are three examples I found that would provide more examples of common signal phrases, but it would also help provide some more help if you still were unclear about how to use signal phrases. But remember, you can always come see me at any of the writer's workshop hours to get more help as well.